I felt vindicated throughout. I was, ne I was never in any doubt that I'd you know, done something uh, horrendously wrong or anything, um, other than support people that, uh, in dreadful circumstances, you know, fleeing war, um, um, fleeing climate change, all kinds of things that, that can culminate in a person having to leave their home. Um, which is unimaginable, really. But um, so I did. Yeah, I think it. I think it just got really just slightly out of control. It was disproportionate. Um, so I, I, I was never overly worried that way. And does it make you again? This word, do you now feel almost more em empowered and emboldened to now speak out even more on this subject than you have done previously? Well, I am a little bit the kind of person that if I'm told not to do something, then I'll do it, maybe it will drive me to do it even further. But um, I, no, I'll, I'll continue to, to speak out. I've always had, I had an agreement with um, the BBC that I would um, continue to, to talk about the refugee cause and, and climate change, two things that are very important to me, um, that I've been involved with um, campaigning and such like for, for a number of years. So. Um, I'll, I will continue to do that. Um, obviously, sometimes people will say that crosses a political line a little bit, but I, you know, almost everything does in life, um, and that includes football as well. You know, people say stick to football, stay out of politics. Well, they're kind of entwined. Um, so yeah, I'll carry on. But do you understand why people do say, you know, as the highest-paid member at the BBC, as a TV presenter? you shouldn't be crossing that line to politics because of your position and, and where you work. Well, people are entitled to their opinion, um, but I don't see how much someone's salary is, um, is relevant in any way, shape or form as to whether you have an opinion or not. I, I absolutely value their right to freedom of speech, um, but most of the people that you know, champion freedom of speech um, only do so um, until they disagree with you, and then they, they don't campaign. But so very much. But you know, people will have their views. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a freelance sports person. I mean, I don't see how that is is an issue at all with having views about the refugee crisis. Because the confusion seems to be that as a BBC employee, albeit a freelancer, you're not allowed to have political views. But was that was that well, misunderstood? I, uh, well, by I, I I disagree um, because. Um, it's only really ever applied to news and current affairs, and obviously um, that's been, they've tried to change that in recent times to a degree, but there are only guidelines. Um, and also there's nothing in my contract whatsoever about having opinions about a variety of different things. And I think it's actually really important that people with, with a platform do use it for the power of good. I feel like I'm careful anyway. Nobody knows who I vote for. I've never told anyone who to vote for um, in terms of in general elections or anything like that. Nobody really knows my politics. In fact, I'm your archetypal floating voter. On politics, we know that you wasn't a fan of uh, the Home Secretary, Swella Braverman's um, take on when she said, you know, uh, I dream of the day when I get to see um, uh, migrants on a plane shipped off to, to Rwanda. She recently said that she also thinks that white people shouldn't be guilted in um, feeling bad about historical slavery and racism. What do you think she's trying to achieve with these sorts of statements? And, and, and what's your view on where she's trying to go with, with this sort of narrative? Um, well, I can't speak for, for, for her, um, obviously. And also, this does clearly cross into a political area where it's talking about the government. I disagree with their policy. I think most people do. I don't know whether it will actually be even legal. Um, we'll see if anyone ever does actually go there. Um, but yeah, for me, it's more about the language that's sometimes used generally across the boards. So, you know, when they when they use words like um, kind of criminals and rapists and invasions and swarms. That's what I'm. All I was asking for is a little bit of kindness. I, getting onto you know, absolute certain politicians is not an area where I, you know, that's where I do understand where I think the lines are. I'm on the BBC, can I ask you if you think that the Director General, his position was weakened by the situation with what you tweeted and the suspension, and because a lot of people rallied at the BBC behind you, do you think it significantly weakened his role? I, mean, I don't think so. The deck, you know, he, he responded to, to the way events um, came through um, and in the end he you know he kind of turned things around um, listened and and I think um, overall it's it's 
I don't see him in a weaker position. He's got a, he's a incredibly difficult job, and, and obviously impartiality is really tricky at the BBC. Um, and it's, it's an issue that I think is almost unresolvable. Do you think he would have been suspended from the BBC had that same tweet had been in favour of government policy? No, I don't. Is it fair to say that this hasn't changed your behaviour in tweeting? You, because of what's happened with your suspension, it has not altered what and how you tweet now? Well, no, because I think because the fact they backed down on the suspension after it and realised that they'd, they'd erred. Three out of four members of staff at the BBC have said that they don't feel, uh, f they don't have faith in the current uh, leadership of, of the BBC, of which Tim Davies is a part of. Is that what you're hearing? Do you have faith in the senior leadership that run the BBC? I, I'm not hearing that. I don't, I, we don't really have conversations in the match of the day room about the powers that be at the BBC, uh, particularly. Do you stand by a lot of those protesters who are passionate about climate change but potentially having their, their rights to have their say and how they go about it infringed upon? I think it's very worrying that you know, we, we lock people up that are actually trying to make sure that we have some kind of future. Um, I, understand why the, I understand why people can get upset because it's, it's disruptive um, demonstration. Actually, they do stuff knowing that they'll probably be locked up. And, and I kind of admire that in a way, and I know it, I know it angers a lot of people, um, but that's kind of what they want because it's the only way it gets publicised, and it's the only reason we're talking about it now. And I think that's important. And I think in, if we manage to save this, like save the human race um, from 50 years or 100 years' time, and we still exist, they'll look back on these, and they'll look back on people like that and Greta Thunberg and people like that that have made a real difference and they might well be the heroes. Gary thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.